All right, welcome to this video. The goal is to enhance this the, the lead resources script to be able to support uh, systems that have child objects underneath, maybe services or accounts, right? So what are your building blocks, right? You have the script. However, my recommendation is that you go to GitHub and you go to the master uh, Centrify Samples PowerShell because um, this is updated frequency and it has pretty much all the functions that you need and you can use it to add your own functions which is what we'll do here. Another thing that is a, a good resource to know is uh, the developer website. So the reference gives you a lot of um, information about the APIs that can be used in the platform. Um, for example, we uh, you know, we have uh, to delete objects. For example, if I focus on an account, notice that most of the time the API is going to take the ID. The same thing for queries. When you're querying for things, you need to know the ID, right? Uh, that being said, let's talk about the three areas that we decided to talk in the post. One is um, finding out what do we need to query for, um, what are the functions that need to be modified or created, uh, or include it, and then um, how we can change the flow of the script. So let's take a look first at uh, what we need to query. So we um, realize that we need to find out what are the services or accounts inside or associated with a system, right? Uh, my recommendation is to, uh, at least for myself, that you know I'm not very very good with SQL is to leverage the uh, report builder. The report builder is a really cool tool. It was released maybe uh, three months ago. And it just basically makes um, uh, the building of queries for reporting or for this type of research, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, what you see is what you get. So what I'm looking at, let's just say, let's pick on uh, what are the services associated with the system, right? So we start with the server table, right? and uh, typically, what you want to know here is uh, the ID of the service, which is super important, um, the name of the service, and for example, for our reference, uh, when it was discovered. So we have this um, discovered time, right? So here's a preview of this simple table, right? This is the systems that are going to be picked up by the script are the ones that have a discovered time, right? Um, that being said, now we need to be able to join it to another table that is called subscriptions. Um, subscriptions is the name for services. So um, uh, all I need to do is search for it. And, and notice that um, um, I can pick the same, like an ID. So the ID of the subscription. Notice that it will actually do the join, right, for me. So server ID computer ID, right? And uh, uh, I'm interested also in the service name and the status to find out if it's actually being currently managed. So if I do a preview, now I have, right, the IDs of the services, uh, the status, right? Status in this case means okay, means it's, it's being managed. And then the, ser the name of the service, right? So this is the query that I need to modify right and ultimately what I need to feed is um, the name of the server or the ID of the server so what I can do is uh, if I look at subscriptions computer ID this is where my filtering is going to happen so if I do filtering uh, my condition is going to be is and you know it'll even actually show you some results so what I need to do in my query is to modify um, uh, and make this into a variable. So this way I can uh, pass it to a function and get back the services that are associated. You can do the same exercise with accounts. It will be the server table uh, basically joined to the vault account uh, table. So that being said, I have the first building blocks of my script, which is uh, what are the functions and and basically here's what I did right so what I did I created was a function uh, it's called CPS check system objects right and it is just a copy of the other functions it receives 
the endpoint, the token, and the ID. In this case, it will be the ID of the system in question, right? And I construct two queries uh, based on my uh, report builder, and um, I do a query for services and a query for accounts. And this is going to return two objects, two tables, pretty much uh, one with the services and the other one with the accounts. Um, how does that affect the the script, the main script? Notice that the main script will actually try um, uh, to just find the accounts to be deleted. In this particular case, I've added another array here, which is the accounts that will be deleted that have child, child objects underneath. So we're searching for both and we're populating both arrays as we find them. So, for example, if you know there's no um, servers uh, with, that have services or accounts, this will actually uh, add that system <clears throat> to the uh, uh, accounts with children. So in this case, actually, it's the opposite, right? So if there's either a service or an account, we're going to add this to the array that has the computers with child objects. If not, we're going to add it to the ones that doesn't have. So <clears throat> that's kind of like, you know, the, the main function here that is going to drive a lot of the selection. Uh, the other one is uh, the delete account is actually a part of the um, of the function. So one one issue with the delete account is that it was missing this forward slash here. So it was giving me an error. So you may want to modify this for this forward slash and save it. Um, another account that needed to be created, uh, I mean, a function that needed to be created was uh, delete service. So when we look at these, uh, the functions inside the sample, there's no function to delete services. So ultimately, I needed to go back to the uh, developer website and find out about, um, in this case, uh, subscriptions. And I realized that there was another endpoint called subscriptions, delete subscription, and the same function again. So I had to basically create a skeleton fun function and, and modify it to my interest here. So it's the same type of function where it takes the ID, in this case, the ID of the service, and ultimately we're going to be using the subscriptions, delete subscription method. So this is going to be the functions that I'm going to need to uh, either include modify or create right to be able to drive the script and this is where we're actually including them so if we look at um, at those um, that's where they are included so we're going to split this video in two in the next video i'm going to show you how we you know control the main flow and how we can see a sample of it running